Yo, what's up? Welcome to episode one of the F45A 2024 Masterclass. This whole series is going to be designed to get you ready to fly one of my favorite jets inside of VTOL VR, the F45. The F45 is great. It's beginner friendly. It's stealthy. It's slick. It's sleek. It can employ air to air weapons, air to ground weapons. It can kind of do it all. It's so multi role inside of this game that it is worth the time to learn the F45. Especially if you're brand new to VTOL VR, maybe you just picked it up over the holiday season, this is gonna be a great jet to get started with. All right, check it out. When you first get in this cockpit, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And if you're new to any flight sims, this can be incredibly overwhelming. I'm gonna show you my method of splitting this up into three distinct sections to understand what's going on inside of this cockpit a little better. Now, I don't mean for my way to be the only way or the best way to do this, it's just the way that works for me. So, what I like to do is I split this into three sections. We have this right hand section here, which controls things that are power related, our engines, our battery, uh, the canopy, which is like a utility to this, and the comms. What's cool about comms is if you ain't got no friends, Vito VR lets you like talk to it. So you can talk to the tower, you can talk to your wingman and stuff, and it just brings a whole new level of immersion, and it's really cool. The last little section over here like actually adjusts this flight stick. I'll show you that in a second. This middle portion is like all of your instrumentation. So your radar, your navigation, your weapons, everything that we need when we're in the middle of a mission will be here in this middle section. And this left-hand section is pretty much everything to do with getting off the ground or back on the ground. So takeoff and landing as well as thrust in flight, okay? The most important part of this left-hand section though, this little bobblehead. It's actually true that 100% of pilots that don't flick the bobblehead crash and burn mid-mission. All right, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the jet up because in order to get these center MFDs turned on, we need power. So I'm just gonna walk you through the startup procedure for the F-45 while we're here. If you like the videos like this that are quick and short and to the point, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Keep coming back because the rest of this masterclass is gonna be just like this. I'm gonna give you just enough info at the period of time that you're getting it to start working on it and we're slowly gonna increment it and make it more difficult and challenging as the episodes in the masterclass go on. So you're absolutely gonna wanna come back for more. All right, starting this jet simple. Before we do anything, we need some form of power and just like your cell phone, that comes in the form of a battery. You flip that switch up, you get a green light there, you get three green here for your landing gear and you get an artificial horizon. But here's the thing with battery power, it's just like your cell phone or every other battery in the world, this is limited time power. So we have to turn on some secondary power to this aircraft so that our battery maintains a charge. We do that through the auxiliary power unit. We grab this switch and we flip it on. That's gonna spin up, it's gonna get a little loud so we're gonna close the canopy which is this switch here. That'll quiet it down for us as the bubble comes down. We can check the RPMs of the APU right here and look, as long as it's in the green, then everything is fine. If it's not in the green, turn it off, turn it back on again, right? There's not a whole lot of systems failures and in-depth troubleshooting that takes place with inside of VTOL. So as long as it's green, we're good to go. With the APU running in the green and in good condition, we're gonna go ahead and lift this switch cover and toggle this switch on. We can then close this switch cover. It's really cool. It's not gonna turn that switch off and our engine RPMs are gonna start spooling up. They're gonna settle back down to idle. Congratulations, the F-45 is actually started. You can go fly right now if you want. Before we take it for a flight though, when the engine is running, we don't need the APU anymore. The engine is supplying the charge to the battery, so we can go ahead and turn that off. All right, the last little piece on this right-hand section deals with moving your stick around. You can press each one of these buttons to adjust this so that when you reach out and grab it, you, you hit it 100% of the time. You don't want to end up trying to grab back here or up here and not being able to get to the stick. One of the nicest features here is this auto button. Click the auto button, grab this stick, settle yourself comfortably where you're gonna fly, let go of the stick, hit the auto button again, and your stick is adjusted. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, it doesn't get better than that. 
All right, moving on to this middle section. We're not going to dive deep into each one of the individual instruments today in this episode. If you want that information, you're going to have to stay subscribed and stay here for the rest of the masterclass as we talk about each instrument on an as needed basis. For now, let's turn this thing on. We got a power switch here above our artificial horizon. That's going to turn on our MFDs. You'll notice right now we don't have any HUD symbology. So we're going to grab this switch. Bam. Welcome HUD symbology. All right, bet. While we're down here, before we move up to this top section, we can take a look at the master arm switch. Right now, there is no pew pew. I cannot fire guns. I can't kill anything. My jet is on safe, right? If I want to go into kill mode, I need to toggle this up. Unlike the engine switch, if I close the switch cover, my weapons are safe again. Artificial horizon. Blue means sky, brown means dead. Okay? That means you're heading towards the ground. This is really helpful if you are flying at night, maybe stuck in clouds, you're upside down, twisted all over the place in the middle of evading a missile. Artificial horizon might just be the thing that saves your life. One more adjustment to look at really quick before we jump to the middle is the seat. You can raise and lower your seat. You'll notice if I do this, like the HUD starts bleeding into these instruments. So I like to adjust my seat to make sure that the HUD is perfectly centered inside of the canopy. Note that if you do adjust your seat, you might need to readjust your flight stick because your position in game has changed. So just know that adjustments kind of take place together. The next two switches here, the first one, hey, if we're flying at night, we might need our night vision goggles, our NVGs, night vision goggles, y'all. These are worthless during the day, right? The next one's for our visor. In the F-45, you do not need the visor to see the Hemix device, the helmet-mounted queuing system. See how the HUD kind of follows our head? That happens on its own. In some jets, though, you'll need to lower the visor in order to see that. In the F-45, the visor kind of just looks cool and helps with bright images if you're flying towards the sun. All right, the point you care about, the middle portion of this cockpit. This is a giant touch screen. Every single thing on here can be touched and changed and edited to fit you. Again, we are not going to dive into what each one of these individual instruments does in this episode. We will talk about them on an as needed basis. But let me show you how to manipulate this. For example, if I need comms, I'm gonna press the comms button. Bam, here's the comms page. These are all now buttons. So if I wanna talk to ATC, we're at an airbase, and I wanna request takeoff, I do it through there. If that's too small and hard to see, I can press this down arrow. It's going to stretch it out. If that's too skinny and hard to see, I can press this right facing arrow. It's going to stretch it out. That is as big as you can stretch out any individual instrument. Maybe you find a layout that you like. For example, I have this layout that I like when I'm on the ground. It gives me comms and it gives me my mission objectives. If I want to save a layout after I go through the pain of organizing this to be something I like, I pick one of these buttons and I press and hold. You'll get an audio cue, the word saved will show up, and now you can come back to that very quickly. So you'll see for me, four is another pre-saved layout, same with three, another pre-saved layout, and same with two, another pre-saved layout, okay? And you're gonna figure out what layouts work best for you as you play the game and figure out what missions you plan to fly. If you wanna quickly swap these around, press the swap button. It just flips what's on each side. Pretty easy, cut and dry. Here's our radar power switch. We turn that on, we have a radar. Uh, if I come over here, you'll see this green arc here on the right MFD. If I turn the radar off, it goes away. The radar is no longer pinging. Also, we get our countermeasures, how much chaff, how much flare. And these two buttons will toggle what information is displayed here. This one's for autopilot. And this one gives us our fuel information. That's pretty much the gist of what's going on in this center. That's not any detail about how the tactical situation display works or what an RWR is or how to paint targets for GPS or whatever. All of that is covered in future episodes, so I'll say it one last time. Make sure you sub up so that you don't miss those episodes going forward. All right, the last section is this takeoff landing navigation section of things. We have a button here for our autopilot for vertical takeoff or landing. We press this. If As long as we have the, the proper thrust to weight ratio, we can enable the autopilot and it will help us do a VTOL. 
Right now, we don't have that, so if we try to press it, it tells me I can't do that. Next is the landing gear lever. Three green lights means the gear is down. Wheels are on the ground, okay? As we fly, we're gonna toggle that up. These lights are gonna go off. If they're yellow, it means the gear is transitioning. Sometimes we might wanna dump stuff off our jet, such as external fuel tanks that are empty or pods that we're carrying, cruise missiles after we've already fired them. One of the perks of the F-45A is that it's a stealth aircraft, but we get an increased radar cross-section by having all kinds of crap on the external parts of the airplane. We can drop those when we're done using those stores using this switch here. Just like your car, the F-45 has a parking brake. If I turn this off, we're going to start creeping forward a little bit, nice and slow. Right? But we don't want to do that right now, so we're going to toggle the parking brake on. This prevents you from having to hold the brake the whole time you're setting up the jet. Next, we have these three switches. Wings up and down. Real simple. If I do wings up, the wings start to fold, as you can see. This is useful for aircraft carrier storage, right? Moving around on the deck of an aircraft carrier is a space at a premium type of activity. We can raise the wings so that we are smaller and can move around better. Next is the hook and the launch bar. I'll cover those when we get to carrier ops. The fuel port, this opens a door on the, the side of the jet that allows the, uh, the KC-130 or 135, whatever we have in this game, to put the boom in the side of the jet and give you fuel. If you don't open that, you don't get any gas, all right? So only open this when you need gas. These last switches involve lights. If I turn this one on, we can't see it, but it's like a light that points out in front of the aircraft to help us navigate in low light situations for takeoff and landing. We have strobes, if we toggle that on, just behind that AIM-9 on the wingtip, you'll see a light starting to flash, that's the strobe. If you look midway up that wingtip and we turn on the nav light, a red light has turned on. I'll toggle it a couple times, so hopefully you can see it. All right, that's the nav light. Last, we have formation lights. These are lights that exist on the tail of the aircraft that help us align and stand formation in low light situations. In single player, a lot of that's not gonna matter to you outside of maybe the landing lights. In multiplayer, it can be crucial to figure out the orientation of an aircraft in the sky or your wingman. So make sure you pay attention to turning lights on when you're playing multiplayer. Next, we have this instrument light switch. We turn this on and you'll see like the backlighting for all of our instruments tends to illuminate. This is great for nighttime low light conditions. Now, there's a brightness knob over here it's, it can be kind of tricky to get to depending on your setup you can toggle it and it will change the brightness of this also you can change the brightness of your mfds and you can change the brightness of the hud okay that is all helpful at night when light can make it hard to see and or wash out your night vision goggles next is an mp3 stream maybe you want to load an mp3 soundtrack and listen to it hey you can do that here at vtol and lastly is the throttle. You grab the grip, push it forward, that increases the throttle, pull it back, that decreases the throttle. The final part of this cockpit is the part that you should never touch. Your life is not on the line, and let's face it, going down with the ship is the pilot's job, and that's the handy dandy ejection handle. You grab that, you pull that, right now you'll break your neck on top of the hanger that's above us. But if you really feel the need to punch out because you've just given up on everything you care about in life, Grab that handle and give it a quick yank. So just like that, that's your orientation of what's going on here in the cockpit. You know everything about power. We, we didn't really talk about the comm switch, but it's pretty self-explanatory down here. We closed the canopy. We showed you the MFDs. We showed you how to interact with the MFDs. We didn't really talk about the instruments in detail. We showed you how to turn your weapons on. We showed you how to change the brightness. And we talked about all the switches here on the left-hand side of this panel. You're now familiar with the F-45A cockpit. Honestly, you're ready to jump in this jet, play around, try to set up some layouts that you might think work for you. Have an open mind. You're going to change them as you spend time in this jet. As you learn what you like to fly, how you like to fly, and what your mission needs are, you're probably going to alter these layouts quite a bit. If you like this episode, do me a favor. Like this episode, please. As a new channel on YouTube, all your help is super beneficial for this channel's growth also if you like this video hey join me in the next episode we're actually going to take off in this plane we'll fly around for a little bit and we'll land your support means the world to me 
and we'll see you in the next episode.